In this example I'm going to how to use the SD card reader with a ESP8266. In this case it's a, a Wemos board, uh, but it could be a Node MCU or pretty much any other type of ESP8266. As long as you get the right connections it will all work. Um, I'll just illustrate there, those are the connections I've made. The D5 pin on the Wemos goes to the serial clock of the SD card reader D6 to the master in slave out that's data coming back from the SD card uh, D7 to the master out slave in and uh, D8 to the chip select pin VCC or 5 volts to uh, the 5 volt VCC on the SD card reader and ground to ground Note that the, um, the filing system, the SD card filing system on the ESP or Arduino uses the 8.3, so file name .txt and is case insensitive, so I've given some examples there. Uh, those file names are exactly the same. Uh, also remember that when you write data to a file or print data to a file nothing happens until you actually issue the uh, file.flush or file.close commands so whenever you open a file be sure to close it to make sure you saved all your data committed all your data to the SD card I thought I'd now begin to go through all of the uh, commands available the SD begin, the object to begin data reading and writing to the SD card has a uh, chip select pin in brackets so in my case that's uh, D8 you could just you could put D8 in there you don't have to uh, set up a uh, definition for that the next command is does a file exist? So sd.exists. Uh, if I put in the highlighted file here, file name.txt, if file name.txt was on the SD card, it would return true. Otherwise, it returns false. You can uh, include prefixes such as a classic forward slash and a directory. So if the file was in a directory called temporary you, you your file name would be and my file name was file name.txt it would be forward slash directory uh, forward slash file name.txt so you can navigate down to a folder uh, to test whether the files there or not open a file give it a file name and uh, two optional parameters open it for reading or open it for writing. If you leave that out, that optional parameter out, it defaults to uh, open for reading and uh, and if the file and if you open it for writing and the file doesn't exist, it gets created, which is quite handy to know. Make a directory. It gets fairly self-evident. If you wanted to create a directory called data logger, you'd go SD make directory and then brackets data logger and that's a directory for holding uh, your results perhaps remove a directory and then remove a file and it optionally can also remove a directory if prefix with a forward slash so if you created a directory called directory and you SD remove forward slash directory would actually delete that directory otherwise it deletes the file name the uh, note that the remove directory command the directory has to be empty beforehand okay for file operations you can read a file read a a byte from a file optionally a series of bytes or in this case here this would have to be an array of bytes and and you'd have to quote 
the number of bytes being read. Write a byte, uh, print a variable or print a string to the file. The same thing, print line, which is print a variable with a carriage return line feed. Check if a file is available and whether there are bytes available for reading and it's a function and the return value will be the number of bytes. Seek is go to a particular record number in the file and returns true if it found the right if it found so if you had 10 records and you said file seek 11 that would return false but file seek 10 would return true get the current position of the file pointer so if you had a 10 records in a file and read five of them it would be at position six close a file when you finished and uh, that also ensures that data is written to the SD card flush the buffers again um, similar to closing it uh, flushes the RAM buffers and uh, writes commits data to the SD card peak wherever the file pointer is it will look into if you like or peek into the file and tell you what's at the file pointer but it doesn't actually advance unlike a read statement so read wherever the file pointer was would actually move the file pointer on after the read function is completed this the peak would just read but, but leave the pointer where it was if you like the page number where it is uh, what's the size of the file Note that it has to be an unsigned long variable type. So if you wanted to uh, declare a variable that tells you how many bytes were in the file, you would have to declare the um, so unsigned long variable name uh, number of bytes would be the definition. His directory will tell you whether a file name is a directory or not open the next file in the on the SD card so if you're doing a directory listing of files on the card that's how you would uh, find the next available file when you're scanning up and down a directory again it's a sequential reading of file names if you wanted to go back to the beginning of the directory you'd have to rewind the directory this is um, setting up the SPI bus and the including the SD library. Defining chip select to be D8. You can use D0 on the Wemos D1 Mini, but remember that's also used for serial communication. So that's why I tend to use D8. Define a file object. So you could put anything you like where it says root but um, it's just easier to, uh, instead of using a file dot prefix all the time, use something that you feel more comfortable with, like my files or my SD card or root in my example here. Begin a serial um, communications port so we can see progress. Print a small diagnostic to say we're waiting for the card to initialize. Open the card for reading and writing and then the first example uh, I'm going to go through is to uh, opening and closing a file. What's the file I want to open? File, root, my file name for this particular session is called root and I'd like to open the directory, all files on the SD card. Uh, for good measure we'll re rewind the directory back to the top and print a directory root. This number here, this parameter here is the number of tabs between file names. But I'll cover the print directory function later on. After printing the directory close the root file and uh, say that it's finished and then wait for a key press. This, this line here is going to wait for a a key press on the serial monitor so that we can step through. The next example is to test whether a file is there or not. So 
look for a file called testfile.txt. If the file exists, uh, report that it, it was found and then delete it. So there's a couple of commands there to look for a file and then delete a file. So that's the first test. It's looking for the file called testdata.txt. If it finds it, delete it. And that's how you delete. If when you test this function out, there was no file called testdata.txt, then print a confirmation that it wasn't found. And if it gets deleted, it wasn't found, and therefore that should return true and print out that confirmation. Go back to the top of the um, the root, rewind the directory, and print the directory again. Just do as evidence that the file has been deleted, and then close the file, close the root file, and then wait for a serial input. In the next example, open a file, and uh, the function of I'm going to now going to call instead of calling it root, I'm going to call it test files. So I'm going to open a file called test file, and I'm opening the same one I'm using each time. Open the file called testdata.txt for writing, and because I've deleted it, this example here is going to create the file. And if test file and, and the status that comes back is true or false, so if the file got created, it's true. So if test file is true, you don't need to include the equals uh, true in that test there. The next thing is if, if the file is exists and you don't need to test that it's true, but if test file is true, you could actually put test file equals true be the same thing uh, write five entries or print five entries to the file one two three four five uh, close the file and uh, that's the task complete and then wait for another serial input from the console before moving on in this example I'm going to open the file again for reading and while it's not the end of file, or while the file is available for reading, print or write in this example because they're all bytes. Everything that is in the file, so serial write from test file, read everything that's in that file. When it's finished reading, close the file and wait for it keyboard input. So now the file contains 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We've closed the file so I'll, I'll open it again for writing. That moves the file pointer to the end of the file so it's now pointing beyond the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ready for a new input. And now I'm going to print 5 down to 0. I'm going to add in or print to the file 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 and close the file and wait for a key press before moving on to the next example. Now is another example of open the file and read and print its file content so that we can see it's got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 which is what I just appended. That's what the file contents should look like at that stage. Okay in the next example I'm going to open the file and move it to record pointer 8. So that is 0, zero 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And at position 8 in the file is the number 3. So open the file for reading, seek record 8 and write the data that uh, is at position 8. Note that we could have put peak there so without moving that pointer forward from 8 when I when that command is executed the point the file pointer moves on to 9 the peak command would have left it at 8 so the after this command has finished the file pointer is at 9. 
another example where I move back to um, file pointer 6 read the data that's at that position there so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and in the in the hint there although it's at file position 6 it should return 5 and that's the number at record 6 which is correct and then for good measure after this read statement the file pointer is at 6 do a read from the file and then the file pointer is incremented to 7 and the data at file position 7 is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and it should return 4 close the file and wait for a serial input in this example I'm going to write um, two records in this example I'm going to open a file for writing and then write two records to it it's sort of a an example of t time and name 10 o'clock name 1101 name to begin with I'll define hours and minutes what the text for the name is and then I'm going to print to the file it's open for writing and the record pointer is at the end of the file in, at the end of whatever data is already in that file and these first two com sub commands if you like to call them that are carriage return and line feed so to separate the data from the existing data put a carriage return and line feed into the file and then print hours and so I can do it all in one print statement everything in this print statement has to be in has to be a string so I've converted hours to a string so these are all strings along here now and that prints 10 into the file add a colon it's not print line so and add a colon and then same for the minutes and then a space and then the name and just repeat that to the serial port so we can see what's going on change the name increment and then put in then print to the file hours plus one and a colon and minutes plus one and then a new name and a carriage return and a line feed repeat that to the serial port I close the file wait for a keyboard input and then display the file contents open it for reading and display the file contents print some confirmation messages that the uh, examples are all complete now at start I said I'd go through the print directory command which is a recursive function and um, remember that secondary parameter was the number of tabs to separate the file names by so the first thing that happens is while true or do it forever open the file which is the next directory file to be displayed if there is no entry say no more files and break so break goes back to where it was called because ordinarily you can't break out of this while loop because while true is true and forever it will be it will loop around continuously so break enables you to break out of this loop and exit the print directory function if the number of tabs was one for example if the number of tabs was greater than zero then a simple for next loop to print a tab character so to move the cursor over by the number of tabs then the next function is to print the first file name in the directory and and if if the first file is a directory itself prefix it with a convention is a forward slash directories are prefix with a forward slash and then call itself again because now we're in a directory call itself with where it is and the number of tabs plus one so increment zero to one and it calls itself and comes down here and starts doing the same thing in this recursive loop round it will the entry will no longer be a directory because the, the file name pointer has moved along one and now it will begin to print the file names in the directory and print a tab 
and the size of the file and then it'll close the entry and come up and repeat the whole process again printing either files or directories as it goes and separating the entries by a number of tabs so if it's a directory it will print tab in to the to the from the from the left to the right and start printing the file names separating the file names by one tab so there is a a quick run through all of the SD commands SD filing commands and some examples of using nearly all of the uh, functions available I'm going to reset the uh, ESP8266 you'll see that it completed this command here waiting for the SD card to initialize and then initialization complete notice that it has a file called testdata.txt already so the next function was to print a directory of the uh, of the card and and it did that it's called system one and those are all the files on the SD card there's a confirmation that the open file example completed next is to look for a file called testfile.txt I'll just move that over a little bit if the file exists delete it and then give a confirmation that it's deleted and then do another directory to show that the file is now deleted so I'll put my cursor in there so look for a file called testfile.txt it was found it was successfully deleted and then another directory shows that it's now been removed from the card next test is to open the file for writing and then put 0 1 2 3 4 5 into the file and then close it there it is 1 2 0 1 2 3 4 5 completed writing the data 1 to 5 open the file for reading and print what's in the file there it is, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there was the reading of the file. The next, the next example is to um, open the file for writing again, which moves the file pointer to the end of file and then add 543210. And let's see it do confirmation of that. That's complete. And then another reading of the file to confirm that. 0 to 5 and 5 to 0 has indeed been written and and then the next test is to seek record 8 and indeed it returns record 8 which is the number 3 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 the next test is to move it to record 6 return the data that is at record 6 which is 5 and that's correct and then print the uh, file pointer which is actually because it completed a read statement it moved on to the next record pointer which is 7 and then it read the data at record pointer 7 with a peak function and it's 4 which is correct then the next part of the test is to um, write two records to the file and then read those two records back and that completes the uh, the test program running and